It'll go out soon. Don't mind the dust. I love throwing a party, but let's face it, if the food isn't good, the party sucks. My niece Madeline is turning too soon and I've created the perfect menu for feeding a big crowd with even bigger appetites. Madeline may be small, but just like the rest of us, she knows how to pack it in. First up, I'm making a version of my penne alla vodka that could be baked ahead of time. Then I'll be whipping up an Italian American classic that really goes a long way when feeding a crowd, sausage and peppers. Finally, for dessert, chocolate cupcakes with luscious chocolate hazelnut buttercream. So let's get this party started. When it comes to my family, we love making dishes that keep on giving. You know, like being able to go for seconds, even thirds sometimes. And this dish is one of them. Growing up, my mom would always make baked ziti and it was like a special night for us. Me and my brother absolutely loved baked ziti night. This version is very similar, but uses vodka sauce instead of just a plain old tomato sauce. The first thing I'm going to do is warm a couple of tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil into a really large high-sided skillet. I'm gonna put that over a medium-high heat. To that, I'm adding four ounces of diced pancetta, and we wanna cook that just until it's nice and crispy. You really want a small dice here so that when we mix this into our casserole dish later on, there's a little bit of pancetta in every bite. This is where it starts to pop like popcorn. And then to this, I'm going to just grate in one large clove of garlic. I don't need a ton of garlic because my tomato sauce has plenty in there. Hmm, smells so good already. Just give that a quick stir to kind of let that garlic melt right on in. Now we start having some fun. We need some vodka for vodka sauce. I'm using a half cup of a really good vodka. If you're doing this over a gas stove, be very careful. Because fire. Madeline would absolutely love this. Okay, so you just wanna reduce the vodka by about half, scraping up any of the brown bits on the bottom of the pan. And to this, I'm gonna add three quarter cup of heavy cream and two cups of my everyday tomato sauce, which you can learn how to make by watching the risotto episode of season one. And just stir it to combine. It's gonna be this gorgeous light pink color. Trying to match my shirt. Isn't that a beautiful color? And now I'm going just to reduce this slightly. In the meantime, Let's throw in our pasta. So generously salt, some boiling water, make sure it comes back to a boil. Then I'm gonna add a pound of penne de gate. Because this is a baked pasta, it's going to continue cooking in the oven. I'm only cooking the pasta about three quarters of the way at this point, so like super molto al dente. Remember when we made a big fire in here? I have a one pound brick of whole milk mozzarella and I'm just gonna grate that. And if some larger chunks fall in, that's totally cool. Those will just be bigger melty chunks of cheese in your finished baked penne alla vodka. Okay. This sauce is looking really good. It smells really good too. So my pasta is about three quarters of the way cooked and I'm just gonna use a spider to transfer it right into my vodka sauce. And at this point, I'm also gonna add about a half cup of the cooking liquid. I'm gonna cut the heat. Now I know it looks really liquidy, don't worry about that. As the pasta cooks in the oven, it's going to continue to absorb some of it and it'll be perfect in the end, I promise. Now we just have a few more ingredients to add. Quarter cup of grated pecorino, a 15 ounce container of whole milk ricotta cheese, Give it a taste for seasoning. Could use a little salt and about a quarter of a teaspoon 
of black pepper. And then I'm going to add two thirds of this grated mozzarella right into the pot. And just stir it as quickly as possible because it's going to start to melt. Make sure everything's really well combined. I see a big clump of mozzarella. Okay, you can see it's already getting a little stringy. Grab a nine by 13 casserole dish and right on in. I wanna get all of that deliciousness. And just spread it into an even layer. Look how cheesy this already is, but I'm not done. I have that remaining mozzarella cheese that I'm just gonna sprinkle over the top. Yes, all the cheese. Grab a sheet of aluminum foil and wrap it around the top. Wrap it tightly. We wanna trap in the steam, which is gonna help the pasta cook and stay moist. I'm gonna cook this in a 350 degree oven for 45 minutes covered. Then I'll remove the foil, give it another 15 minutes to start to crisp it, and then hit it for a minute or two under the broiler so that the cheese gets nice and golden brown and crispy. Look at this melty cheese goodness. Now, I need to make sure this is up to Madeline standard, so of course I have to taste it. Hmm, this has the perfect combo of cheesiness and crispy bits. Hmm, oh my God, that is so good. It is so cheesy. The vodka sauce is just so delicious. My niece is going to absolutely love this. That's why I'm her favorite uncle. <laughs> Sausage and peppers are the perfect party dish. This recipe is truly no frills using just a few ingredients that are just flavorful and delicious. So I'm using two green bell peppers, two red bell peppers, and one large white onion, just because it reminds me of the Italian flag. You can use any color combination that you'd like. So just trim off the tops, and then pull out the centerpiece. And then I have them, and kind of go in with my knife, and just cut away the membrane. Depending on how big they are, you can quarter these onto the red. Once that's all taken care of, you wanna slice these into quarter inch strips. Then for the onion, just remove the top, I'm gonna cut it in half, and then cut it into quarter inch half moons. And that can go right on in the same bowl. And while I'm here, I'm just gonna prepare my garlic. I have four large cloves that I'm just going to thinly slice. That's a big one. Just push that to the side. And that's the bulk of the prep. Now I have a sausage ring. I love using a sausage ring. Growing up, my dad would always grill sausage ring in the summers, and I just love it, really. We're going to be searing this, so I'm just gonna pat it and make sure that there's no excess moisture so we get a really nice sear. And then I'm just gonna take a fork and prick around to break the casing so that it doesn't explode when cooking. And I'll do that on both sides. Now that the sausage is prepared, time to start cooking. I'm going to add about two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil to a large high-sided skillet. I'm gonna get this nice and hot. Add your sausage. Press it down to make sure it's making contact with the pan. And I'm using a splatter screen. It really does help cut back on the amount of grease that comes flying off as your sausage sears. So if you have it, this is a really good time to use it. I'm gonna cook it on both sides until it's nice and seared, about six to eight minutes per side. The sausage is really the star of the show for this dish. So be sure to find really premium sausage. I like to get mine at my local Salumeria. 
been about six, almost seven minutes. So be careful. It does have a tendency to kind of splatter on you as you're trying to flip it. Just work it back down and cover it back up and another six to eight minutes. I'm not looking to fully cook this sausage at this point. It's going to go into the oven. I just really want that nice sear on it. So carefully remove it, put it back on the sheet pan. Don't worry that it was on the raw sheet pan. It's going back and we're cooking it. Now I'm going to add about a quarter cup more of extra virgin olive oil and our onion and peppers. And at this point, you wanna to start to season your vegetables. So a couple of generous pinches of salt. As the vegetables cook, they'll release their liquid, which you can then use to deglaze the bottom of your pan and get all of these gorgeous brown bits up. That's all flavor from the sausage. Should I try to get a toss? Let's see if it works. While the vegetables continue to cook, I'm actually going to, at this point, remove the skewers that are holding the sausage ring together. There's usually at least four. Now I'm just gonna take my knife and cut these into about three, four inch pieces. So my vegetables are pretty tender at this point. I'm going to add the sliced garlic. And then the sausage goes right into the pan, kind of nestle it into the vegetables. Then I like to take any of the juices that may have come out of the sausage and just add that to the pan as well. It's all flavor. And at this point, all we need to do is put it in a 400 degree oven until the sausage is cooked through, the vegetables get super tender. It's gonna take about 20 minutes. how crispy that sausage is. The vegetables are super tender and have almost melted into this gorgeous sauce on the bottom of the pan. I think I need to give it a taste. It's so good as is, but in my family, we love to serve it on some sort of a roll. Now, I'm gonna teach you a secret. Don't tell anyone I told you this, but you wanna take your roll and kinda just gently press it in to absorb just some of that juice. It's the best part. And then just build your sandwich. Make sure you get a little bit of everything on there so that every bite has some of the vegetables and then some of that crispy sausage. It's a little bit messy, but some of the most messy food items are the best ones. Looks so good. The vegetables are super tender. The sauce is just plain old delicious and nice and crispy. This is definitely going to be a hit at the party. What kid, or adult for that matter, doesn't absolutely love chocolate? So these cupcakes are going to be the perfect end to my niece's birthday party. The cupcakes themselves are delicious, but what really puts us over the top is my chocolate hazelnut buttercream. Let's get started on the cake. So we're gonna start with all of the dry goods right in my stand mixer. Two and two thirds cup of all purpose flour. We wanna make sure we have the right amount of flour. Baking is not the time to start eyeballing things. Then to start the show, some cocoa powder. This is a really high quality cocoa powder, which is very important because it is one of the key ingredients and I'm adding a generous amount, three quarters of a cup worth. Now, my niece is very sweet, so we need to put a lot of sugar in this. One and a half cups of just plain granulated sugar. 
And then for some additional moisture and extra sweetness, a half a cup of light brown sugar. Flop. Then just the last few dry ingredients. First, some leaveners, which will give the cupcakes a great crumb and some nice lift. I'm doing one and a half teaspoons each of baking soda and baking powder. And then finally, one and a half teaspoons of some kosher salt. And that's all of the dry ingredients. Throw your paddle attachment on and just mix this until it's well combined. That looks great. Let's get working on the wet ingredients. So I have a four cup liquid measuring cup here with a half a cup of vegetable oil. And I'm going to add two large eggs that are at room temp. And just whisk to combine. Perfect. I'm going to add some flavoring. One teaspoon of vanilla. And then I'm going to add one cup of whole milk. Just drizzling that in, starting to combine, make a nice emulsion. I'm going to put my stand mixer on low and just drizzle in my wet ingredients. And it's going to form a pretty thick batter, almost paste-like consistency. You want it to be well combined. Make sure there's no clumps of dry ingredients left at the bottom of your bowl or along the sides. And then just give it one more gentle mix. At this point, I have one last ingredient and it's one cup of hot coffee. You can also use hot water here, but I really like how the coffee and chocolate notes play off of each other. You really won't even know it's in there. You're going to add this in four equal additions, about a quarter cup at a time, really making sure that the consistency of the batter is uniform before adding the next. It's a really important step. And the last quarter cup. You can see it's considerably thinner. It's just this beautiful, velvety batter. Now this makes 24 cupcakes. I like to use a piping bag. So I'm putting about half the batter into a piping bag. And then I have two 12 cavity cupcake pans that are lined with cupcake liners. So carefully fold up your piping bag. Twist it to lock. And then you wanna fill each of these up about two thirds of the way full. This batter is also enough if you wanted to make an actual cake to make two eight or nine inch cake rounds. Cupcake liners are all filled with this gorgeous, luscious batter. And all we need to do is bake it at 350 degrees for about 18 minutes until a toothpick comes out cleanly when inserted into the center. cupcakes are out of the oven. They're completely cooled. You want to give it at least 45 minutes depending on how cool your kitchen is. Now I'm going to make one of my favorite frostings, a Swiss meringue buttercream. It's super velvety. It's not overly sweet. It's not overly buttery. It's just the perfect combination in my opinion. And it's pretty simple to make if you can master just a few relatively simple techniques. The first thing we need to do is crack four egg whites into a stand mixer bowl. And it's really important that it's just the egg whites and no yolks, otherwise they won't whip up. I'm going to add just a couple more ingredients. Three quarters cup of granulated sugar and a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. And then with a whisk, mix just to combine. Now I have a small saucepan with just about an inch of simmering water and this is going to create a double boiler. I'm gonna place this right on top and begin whisking. 
What this does is allow this mixture to start gently heating up and the sugar will melt into it and it's gonna get really light and fluffy. And this is the beginnings of our Swiss meringue. You can see it's already starting to lighten in color. Just keep whisking the mixture constantly so that it heats evenly. You'll see it's already beginning to lighten in color slightly. It'll keep lightening as you incorporate more air. And you wanna cook this until when you grab some and rub it, you don't feel granules of sugar. Okay, at this point, remove it from the heat and put it right onto your stand mixer. It's fitted with the whisk attachment and just let it go until it's cool to the touch. It's gonna take a couple of minutes. It's gonna get nice and thick. It's almost gonna look like marshmallow cream. Okay, so you can see how thick this Swiss meringue is. It is pretty much room temperature at this point. You don't want it to be warm to the touch because we're going to start adding butter and we don't want it to melt into the meringue. So with the machine on low, medium low, I have a half a pound of unsalted butter and I'm just gonna start grabbing little pieces. And at this point, you may notice that the meringue starts to deflate. That's because we're adding fat at most a tablespoon at a time. As we add the butter and it emulsifies, the texture is gonna change right before your eyes. And there it goes, you hear it, the sound just changed as the butter is really starting to emulsify. And at this point, I actually wanna to switch to the paddle attachment, which will smooth this out and remove any excess air. At this point, it's pretty much a blank canvas. It's nice and sweet and buttery, but this is where we need to add some flavor. And I'm using some Nutella. You can use any chocolate hazelnut spread here as long as it's creamy. You don't want any of the oily stuff or it'll break your buttercream. So I'm going to add a half a cup and then just mix it to combine. That's it. We now have chocolate hazelnut buttercream. I like to come in and give it just one more quick stir to make sure everything's fully incorporated. It's super smooth, super creamy, and I promise you it is super delicious. So I have a piping bag that's fitted with a medium-sized star tip, and I'm just going to transfer my buttercream so that I can decorate my cupcakes. These are so pretty that I feel like they deserve a special display. There you have it. Chocolate cupcakes with chocolate hazelnut spread buttercream. And I love how there just happens to be a couple left over for me. How do you eat a cupcake? I'm one of these people. You know when something's so good, you just have nothing to say? I have nothing to say. Chocolatey goodness all day long. My niece will be good for about two or three of these. I cannot wait to share these cupcakes with my niece and my family.
Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.